Good morning and welcome to the September 20th Public Design Commission meeting. Um, if you're watching on YouTube and you would like to give public testimony on any of the items that are on the public hearing agenda, please do sign up to um, on the sign in form. The link to that form is uh, in the description for the video below the video. Uh, and there you will also find the agenda, which has links to all the presentations. Thank you. Signe. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Signe Nielsen, president of the Public Design Commission. Uh, we're going to begin the meeting uh, with a roll call to uh, confirm commissioner attendance. When I call your name, if you would please say here. Uh, Phil Ahrens. Here. Ken Seth Armstead. Here. Lori Hawkinson. Here. Karen Keel. Here. Manuel Miranda. Here. Susan Morgenthau. Here. Ethel Sheffer. I think she's here. Uh, Meryl Tish. I think she's also here. I'll put question marks for now. Uh, Mary Valverde. Here, I'm here. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we will uh, commence the uh, committee meeting with a presentation on the construction of a golf clubhouse at Randall's Island Park in Manhattan. We will not be hearing public testimony in this, nor will we vote on the project. Um, please uh, proceed team. And if others could put themselves on mute, I hear a lot of background. Thank you, Sydney. Ricardo, we're gonna unmute you and I'm gonna give you remote control. All right, and let's also unmute Tony Makari, who's yeah. going to give an introduction. Um, there go. Okay, good morning. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning. I'm Anthony McCarry, Director of Concession Architecture for New York City Parks. I'm here this morning with Ricardo Zarita, Principal of Ricardo Zarita Architect and Planning, and Paul Ballin, who's in charge of real estate development for Drive Shack Randall's Island. We're here to present the design for a new state-of-the-art golf driving range facility on Randall's Island. The $23 million project will be completely privately funded, developed and operated under the terms of a 20-year concession license agreement between Parks and Drive Shack Randall's Island, LLC. Parks is excited to have the substantial private investment that will provide a new family-friendly amenity that includes a three-tier interactive driving range, indoor mini golf, food and beverage services, and makes vast improvements to the surrounding park landscape uh, within the licensed premises. Drive Shack will be fully responsible for all maintenance of the driving range facility and the surrounding landscape for the license uh, term. The concession will generate substantial revenue through license fees that will directly help fund the Randall's Island Park Alliance's maintenance budget for the island. The project will also create much needed economic activity for the city at this critical time. The driving range replaces an existing concession that had fallen into disrepair and is in significant need of improvements. The site has now been closed for over two years. Um, the architect for the project, Zareed Architects, have designed many of the buildings on Randall's Island, including the Sportime Tennis Center, Icon Stadium, the Park Comfort Stations. They also developed the island's master plan, which has now been largely realized with Drive Shack Randall's Island representing a significant final piece of that master plan. Now I'll turn the presentation over to Ricardo Zarita to walk us through this. Thank you. Great, great. great. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can, can, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, let's get myself, unfortunately. Can I control? So I gave you, yeah, there you go. It says you're okay. Thank you. Uh, this project's on Randall's Island. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I can hear myself. No. That okay? Yeah, we hear you fine. There's no um, echo anymore. We, we turned off your phone um, back of audio. But we can hear you. Can we unmute him again? Yeah, I will unmute one. Ricardo, can you hear us now? I'm trying to unmute you. Okay. 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 I I apologize. We'll we'll um, 
we'll keep going. Uh, the projects on Randall's Island. Um, and as uh, Anthony mentioned, we've been involved on the island for a uh, very long time. It's a 450 acre island, and you can see a view of the island and the site um, on, on, on the right. Um, the site itself is a 16 acre site, and it's in, uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's fine, thank you. Uh, the, the site itself is a 16 acre site and it's flanked on the north by the RFK bridge uh, as well as on the east side. Um, and it's in a part of Randall's Island Park called the um, Harlem River Fields, which um, also contains Icon Stadium. And you can see some views of the site itself and the, and the very large bridge structure that, that um, defines two of its edges. There's a, currently there is a uh, golf center there that's been there for several decades. And it's, it's in uh, poor condition, it's surrounded by a very uh, 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 mature uh, trees and um, takes up about a third of this portion of parkland. Um, these are some views. Uh, it, the facility has been closed for several years and uh, is in poor condition. Uh, in, in these views, you can see the two-story, the two-tier uh, driving range that will be uh, torn down um, and, and some of the mature trees. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a moment. Uh, the upper um, photo is the view looking south where you can see uh, the Harlem River parkland uh, on Randall's Island and also the uh, uh, skyline of, of Midtown in, in the distance. The lower view is of the fairway, um, the current fairway, and looking towards the Manhattan span of the RFK bridge. Uh, the, the site is currently entered through this parking lot on the east side uh, um, uh, after, after going underneath the uh, uh, north-south um, uh, viaduct of the triborough of the RFK bridge, excuse me. Uh, and, and really what you see here is a very deteriorated uh, um, portion of, of, of the park, but also these very large mature trees, quite beautiful. This is the LA of trees, which you have seen on the site plan. Uh, it's, they're, 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 they're quite magnificent. They were planted in the 1930s as part of the uh, uh, development of the island when the bridge was built. Lower uh, images of the existing clubhouse. Um, and, and then uh, this is the old stadium plaza, which is currently not, uh, is, is somewhat uh, forlorn. Uh, we're planning to uh, improve it and, and turn this into the front door to the golf center. Uh, Anthony mentioned some of the projects we've done on, on the island, and here are some images of them. Um, the next two uh, images I'll, I'll talk very briefly about, uh, they, they are basically just studies that show how one would approach and, and access the site itself. And this is sort of important because right now it's a closed site. There's only one entrance, which is that parking lot that I showed you. We're planning to open it up in several areas, primarily for the pedestrians and cyclists um, in, that, that arrive on the island from the different boroughs. Uh, most access is um, from the bridge itself, from the uh, RFK bridge, but also from uh, pedestrian crossings, including a new one from the Bronx that was recently built. Uh, all cars arrive from the RFK bridge. All cars arrive from underneath the north-south um, viaduct, uh, as you can see in this, in this image. And uh, this is a site plan of the existing facility. Uh, I think what's Notable, there are three things that are notable. One is that the entire, currently the entire um, uh, 16 acres are fenced off. Um, we're planning to change that, and I'll talk about that in a second. The fairway is quite large, it's uh, over 350 yards, and you can see that, um, you can see this, the skinny existing driving range. And then what, what, what else is notable and, and surprising is how much of the open area between the driving range building and the entrance parking lot is in fact paved and we plan to undo that and show you our, our plan. So really in a sort of a fell swoop, what we're doing is you can see the building 
uh, has moved to the west. It's a much shorter fairway now. What it's allowed us to do is take about half of the site and turn it into parkland, uh, where we're going to restore the beautiful alley of sycamore trees. And, and um, adjacent to that on uh, west of it, we'll, we're, we're, we'll create a very large uh, open uh, lawn uh, with plantings and, and additional trees. And that'll be um, uh, that'll be accessed seamlessly from other parts of the park that will we'll take out any of the existing fence between it, between this, the licensed uh, area and the rest of the park. Uh, the building itself is, um, uh, is, is, is um, uh, there are four components to the building. The central area is the entrance, reception, food service, public uh, bathrooms, elevators, et cetera. The north side on the right is all back of house and that faces the, the, the bridge area. Um, the portion on the left with the circle in the center is a mini golf area. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, it's a one story structure, it's sculptural in form. And then of course, the, um, the, the west, western portion of the building is uh, three tiers of uh, driving range stalls. This is the second floor and what's notable is you, you do see a kitchen in, in, on the north wing and uh, several two, two, uh, two story spaces over reception areas. Um, and, and then of course the one story, um, uh, the one story uh, roof uh, over the miniature golf and the second level of, um, of the uh, driving range. Uh, the top floor, I think what's notable in terms of what's changed from what you may have seen before is that we did move, we moved the terrace so it's south facing, so it overlooks the park itself. And, and we believe it could be very dramatic overlooking the, 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 the faceted sculptural form of the mini golf. But, but, but more, more importantly, it'll, it'll overlook the park itself and, and we'll have use of the skyline beyond. Uh, this is a roof plan. Most of the roof is in fact flat with the exception of the, of the, of the mini golf. Um, you can see the, the terrace here as well. And, and we've included skylights to bring in light into the kitchen area, as well as a very large skylight that goes into the, um, over the lounge, the circular lounge um, in, in the, the miniature golf. So in terms of the materials, we've, we've, um, we've been exploring different materials. What we're proposing at this point is a, a building that's predominantly, it's, it's a metal panel building. It's predominantly, uh, the, the blue green is a pre-patinated copper panel. The min miniature golf enclosure is, uh, would be a zinc. And then, and then the glazing would be aluminum and, and, and glass. And um, I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a later slide as well, because um, we've, we've gotten feedback from you, which I, I greatly appreciate. And, uh, and, and I do want to address um, uh, what, what I believe is the, sort of the gist of those comments. Uh, the west facade is really form followed function with three tiers. It's a steel building. The, the, the cladding is, is with the metal panels. Uh, there's steel columns, steel, steel beams, uh, and you can see the open tiers. Um, there, there was a comment that we got recently from the commission uh, when we shifted the terrace on the third floor to the to, to have it be south facing, uh, and and in fact our drawings are, that we sent you do appear to show sort of a bathtub condition where the floor uh, of the terrace is lower than the highest point of the of the miniature golf um, uh, structure, and that's not at all what we intend. We've changed that. We we want that terrace to be to overlook everything and not to, to have that bathtub effect. And that's what you see there. The other sections below show the, the three tiers and the section through the miniature golf. Uh, let's talk a little bit about materials. Uh, we've, we, we've changed the materials where we're going with a, a metal building. And, and um, um, one of the comments that we received from the commission is about materiality. And um, I, I think the gist of it is is perhaps the critique is that the building could be better integrated in the various components, particularly the miniature golf with the rest of the building. And, and I, I'm hearing you loud and clear. That's, that's something that we are 
exploring and 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 certainly the use of three different metals the zinc the copper and and the aluminum because after all the aluminum glazing system is a, it's a another sort of uh, uh, element that that's that's important um is 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 something that we are reviewing and and i think uh, you can expect to see some uh changes in um that 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 will be uh, presented shortly uh, these are just some views. I'll go through these quickly. This is a view from the entrance, uh, the, the the sculptural form of the miniature golf with the large uh, skylight. The skylight, we were asked about bringing in light into the miniature golf. And I don't know if any of you have been in one of these facilities, the very 21st century, there what's called technology-enabled activities for golf. It's a very exciting to try to revive these, these sort of um, uh, facilities. And so the miniature golf works with light and it tracks the, the balls with light, sort of like a, a virtual pinball machine, if you will. It's quite exciting. And so we can't have um, uh, natural light on the courses themselves. So we are putting a very large skylight over this, this very dramatic central rotunda, let's call it. Uh, the, the middle, however, uh, the entrance is, in, is in, where, the, where the public enters uh, is meant to be very, very glassy, very transparent, not only for so even from a distance, as you approach the building, you can see into it, you can see the activities of the building and see beyond, and hopefully even we're trying to have you see people playing golf in the different tiers. So this is looking south and you can see um, from the terrace, you'll be able to see the, the park, actually from here, from the ground level, you see the park, the mature trees, and then some of the super talls from, from the midtown sort of peeking through, It's quite amazing. Uh, this is a more finished, um, uh, rendering of the um, of, of the west facade of of the driving range. You see the three tiers um, and 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 the, the metal construction. Um, uh, the, the the previous slide and this slide also uh, are, are were were done to show the connection, the enhanced connections for pedestrians and cyclists uh, that will allow people to. To, um, to go through, to circulate through the site, which is not possible now. And right now what you, you, you're seeing is, uh, is sort of the nexus of people of a path that brings you in from the Harlem Riverside of the park and also from the R RFK um, um, pedestrian and um, uh, bicycle path to the left. So that's what you're seeing. I'll show you a little more of that in a second. Uh, this is a view from with your back to the Harlem River. It's it's on a rise, so we don't have FEMA concerns, fortunately, which is unusual for Randall's Island. Uh, and 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 uh, the, you can see the before and after. And then some of these. This is a new entrance that we're doing from the uh, west side. If you're coming in from the Bronx, for example, you go under the RFK Bridge, and you'd have this entrance to the side. We're we're trying to make the site very porous, which it's not currently, uh, and and really use it to connect. The, this green space to the rest of, of the park itself. This is the, the connection from the RFK bridge from the bicycle and pedestrian path. And you can see right now it's inaccessible. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing from an environmental point of view, but I think it's really very much linked to a couple of points that the commission has raised in terms of, of um, um, well, uh, two two things really that are very very important. One is local law 9293, which uh, requires um, either either or and or uh, uh, photovoltaic panels, uh, solar panels, or uh, green roof. And really, what we're planning to what we what we believe is the right well, or the best position to take for the building is to really optimize and. Uh, the um, uh, uh, electrical power generation through solar panels. Uh, we we love green roofs. Uh, we, uh, we we truly do. We just feel that uh, the resources of the project would be best uh, focused on solar panels and not on green roofs, given that this is not an urban context. And and we are concerned about the the cost and maintenance, and and would like to really focus on on photovoltaic panels. The other issue is stormwater management. This is a much larger project than, than what's there now. And uh, we are working with our civil engineer, Kim Lee Horn, and our landscape architect, MPFP, to come up with a uh, comprehensive system of stormwater management that does not increase 
in at all. And in fact, we are hoping to decrease the amount of water stormwater that goes into the existing um, system uh, on, on the site right now. Um, and so that's what we're showing there. And then this is just a study that, that indicates the lighting. There's, you know, this is a very large facility, but, but there are no plans and we will not have stadium lighting. All of the lighting will come from, the, for the fairway itself will come from the building, which is about 45 feet tall. And you can see an example in New Orleans. Uh, and, and of course there is concern and we, we, we don't want, uh, you know, we expect that the canopy of trees between um, the Harlem River and the site itself and the way we position the lights will, will minimize and, 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 and hopefully eliminate all light bleed. Uh, to to the East Harlem neighborhood, and then I apologize, we weren't able to uh, update the model, but so I'll go through this very quickly. But you can see sort of the structural, the, the sculptural form of the of the miniature golf, as well as the three levels of of the building. This is the older model. We're we're currently updating it. So uh, that's all. I appreciate you um, giving us the time. Thank you very much. Signe, Signe. Ah, there she is. I'm here, thank you. <laughs> um, didn't want you to see me eating breakfast. Um, thank you, Rick. Uh, this is a, a very fine presentation. Uh, I greatly appreciate uh, the number of uh, sort of resiliency moves that you're making here, as you just enumerated the stormwater, um, and uh, also making more of the park uh, accessible to the, the public. So uh, thank you also for the responses that you uh, gave me to uh, prior uh, questions that were posed regarding the landscape. Um, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I saw that uh, Phil had his hand up. That was a mistake, I'm sorry, it's me. I did not have my hand up. <laughs> I had a message it was up, but I did not raise it. Okay, Sorry. no problem. Um, uh, Lori, do you have any uh, comments before I ask other commissioners? Uh, there was, uh, so thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I, there was also a question I noticed in our comments about the stair, the internal stair. I was wondering if that might be addressed. Um, I mean, I don't, it's not our purview to question your plan it's just there's a lot of stairs and um just wondering if you could address that okay yeah i'm i'm sorry i'm not i i don't i'm not quite sure I, I, do you mean the additional stair on the left side and and what happens can you hear me yeah we can hear you yeah okay yeah and 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 what happens on the left side between the sort of central area and the mini golf is that well, you have five yeah. stairs, you have right. five sets yeah. of stairs. So, and then one of yeah. them, when we were going through the plans, there's kind of a, I mean, again, just peculiar situation where it jumps across a floor with a corridor. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's not my business. It's just, I'm trying to reduce, wanting if we yeah. might reduce the number of stairs because it might help clarify, especially at this entry yeah. point where you have this chunk right there um, between your, you know, your crystalline thing and then the, the bar building. Right. Oh gosh. Yes, that has tortured uh, me personally. It looks like it's uh, tortured. I, it looks like it's been tortured. <laughs> yeah. We 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 would like. I'd like. I'd love. And I said I'd lo I'd love to get rid of that stair. Uh, our our code people here in the office, uh, and and our code consultant is is saying that we're required to have it because of the length of the building, um, and 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 it has to actually. You know, it's it starts at the stalls and it has to exit out into uh, to the outside, and so what we come up with is um, a um, a condition where you're you're exiting on the third floor. Sort yeah, of I think it's another slide. The stalls. It's a different yeah. slide. Right. The the uh, yeah. The, it's it would a be. It's a different right, slide. The other one, the one between the second floor. There. Right, there one, it is. Just where weird right, you're situation. entering this. Right, this this fireproof enclosure was there. On the on the third floor, you go down immediately, 
and then you have to go across this hallway to then access another stair that goes one story down to the to the ground floor. Um, this gets you out of the building from and and satisfies the the code requirement. Um, and I'm not sure how else to do it. It's it's not ideal. It certainly is not ideal. I I I I felt somewhat that I was being clever by coming up with this, but it's certainly not something that I would like. I'd like to get rid of it, but uh, I'm being told that because of 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 um, dead end dis dis of distances, travel distances, excuse me, that, mm -hmm. that, that that we're required to have this. Okay. Well, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I mean, it's not our I'll purview. Take... I just it seems that. I mean, I'm sure you've looked at everything. If they're more evenly spaced, I'm sure you've tried that because you've got one monumental and you there's obviously there's that space where you don't have the travel distance, but it would I mean it seems like you're maybe having to have an extra stair, but I don't know. That's your business. Um and so the question of I guess just to uh kind of clarify, so you're so you're gonna look at having solar panels um on the building as possible, right? This, this, I mean, it seems like a yeah. perfect building to put a lot of photovoltaics. So then um, on the material, just to clarify, we were asking since you've done a number or a couple other buildings, specifically more recently, the basketball building, I recall, um, that's this bright color. So we were just thinking of the all the buildings out there since you're doing them, that they're kind of part of a family and that those primary or kind of clear colors might really help to direct people very clearly to where they're going. And that I, the, the copper glass, the copper thing, I don't know. It just seems like not one of the clear colors. It was just to be clear. Yeah, no, that, that, that's fine. I, I appreciate what you're saying. And golf I, isn't I, necessarily I, I more the... special than other sports maybe, or it has to be copper, you know, so just kind of making them an a kind of, you know, a, a wayfinding system, which seems like a great way to, I've been terribly lost out there myself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's a tough, tough It's nice when you have a, a big, when you have a big color to go towards from a distance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, okay. I, I hear you, I hear you. I, I think it might make concern, um, but you know, again, we're 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 definitely mid midstream in terms of mm -hmm. of exploring material and color for the exterior. Um, my concern at this point is is sort of twofold. One is I don't want this building is is a, unlike the other buildings in the sense that the scale is much more sort of um, scaled towards the the the, the human. Um, you know the 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 tennis center is very, very large and 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 really encloses these these very large courts. Um, the uh, Icon Stadium has the bleachers. I think this one, because of 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 the program, you're seeing it much more at uh, sort of a, a smaller scale, more of a human scale. And my concern was that this not turn into this, not have it look like a commercial building. So so I, I mean, I I'm not away yeah. from the yeah mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not suggesting you the, make. Yeah. yeah, I'm not suggesting yeah. that it be all one color because I understand you want to highlight yeah. the interior, uh, you know, that technology enabled golf, you know, mm -hmm. but the other guy, um, the turquoise guy there, that's the only one I'm talking yeah. about. I yeah. understand, no, I understand I, you I, want to break it down. I understand that. Just just to yeah. be clear, just to be clear. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I I can't really disagree with what you're saying and and I I, I hope that the the, uh, the sort of we're, we're we're not done I'm, I'm looking um, at at making sure that this doesn't have the quality of, of a commercial building that you know that we want to stay away from but also I am concerned about the integration of the miniature golf corner with the rest of the building because I, I I'm not mm -hmm. convinced that that is quite working successfully I'll, I'll i just, think that I'll stair the stair because you you know that's where we were we're saying where you and i'm sure that's what you're looking at since it has a different materiality or a different color anyway material you're using the zinc 
that if it were disengaged slightly, if, instead of it being contiguous, which it is right there, and you've got that whole stair kerfuffle going on there, um, that whole thing, that's, that's the joint that I was referring to when we were talking about separating them, just also to be clear. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's a question of, of sort of proportion. The, the miniature golf is, is a little too big to be the jewel at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know if that if, if that's in sync with what, what you're suggesting um, by, by, you know, and, and one way to sort of reduce it in scale would be to treat the, that whole stair piece and, and, and the reception for the miniature golf more as, as part of the more Euclidean, the more orthogonal building mm -hmm. and less like the, less like the jewel, less like the, yeah. the, the, the sort of sculpture. Yeah, I mean it's like the blue whale or something, right? In LA or the yeah that yeah, type yeah. of condition right. where you just is identified with a color, right? The right. Pelly the Pelly projects, right? Yeah, I did look at that by the way, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, any other commissioners have comments, questions? We're not voting, just as a reminder. Lori, did you have a question about the roof, the yes. green roof on the gem building? Well, there, he mentioned that he doesn't want to do green because I know green is more expensive. I know that. And so he's does okay. Okay. the, the client, the art, they don't want to spend as much money. So, okay. But I mean, then we got to do solar panels wherever we can, right? So we got to detail those. <laughs> That's the new regime now, our new world order. So that I'm looking forward to seeing how those get um arrayed and detailed in a way that they just don't look like they were pasted on like postage stamps is there a more detailed signage plan for this project or wayfinding beyond um, some no 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 there there isn't at this point is there plans for one Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We will uh, develop and, and uh, submit that as part of the package. I think, you know, I think what Lori said, you know, looking at page 10, you know, I, I think all the buildings have this kind of distinct identity, but they're all part of a family. And I, you know, I think this works very well as a kind of wayfinding in and of itself. So I, I think something to integrate really nicely, you know, almost even camp. It's probably not officially a campus, but, you know, across the set of projects, I think, you know, a kind of uniform signage system, I think would want to get away from that more commercial aspect you're talking about um, and make it feel more kind of like a publicly accessible, you know, place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there are um, no further questions, hopefully, um, Ricardo, you feel like you and the um, client agency feel like you have enough Feedback to move forward. Is that true? Yes, I see Nancy nodding. Good. Uh, Ricardo, great to see you. Uh, thank you all very much. Great. Thank, thank you very much. All right. Um, so uh, moving on, we will now begin the public meeting with a vote on the consent agenda. We have items 27859 to 27891. Uh, please note Commissioner Aaron's recusal from items 27861 and 27887. Commissioner Armstead's recusal from 27861 and Commissioner Miranda's recusal on item 27865. Are there any other recusals to note? Uh, all right, let the record show there are no further recusals. So I'll now call for the vote. Uh, commissioners, when I call your name, if you would please state your vote for the consent agenda. You may approve all, reject all, and you may also reject or abstain from individual projects. Uh, Phil. Approve all. Ken Seth. Approve all, other than stated uh, recusal. Yes. Uh, Lori. Approve all. Karen. Approve all. Manuel. Approve all. Susan. Approve all. 
Ethel. Approval. Merrill. <coughs> Merrill, are you with us? Carrie, can you see if she's still connected? She's here. Um, she's still muted though, but I see her on our um, Zoom gallery. Mary? Approval. And myself, approval. So the consent agenda is uh, uh, passed unanimously with the recusals as noted. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the public hearing. I'm recused for the from the next item, so I will leave the meeting and Vice President Phil Ahrens will take over. Thank you. Thank you, Signe. And if uh, for members of the public who are watching now on YouTube, if you would like to sign up to give testimony on this project or any of the projects on the public hearing agenda, please do sign up. The link to the form is listed in the description of the YouTube video. So just look below the video. You'll also find there a link to the agenda with all the presentations and full instructions for participating. Okay, Phil. Okay. Um, for uh, standard procedure, the applicants will give their presentation, then public testimony will be heard, and then the commission will ask questions, deliberate, and vote. Thank you. Okay, so please unmute Katie, Rachel, Brian, I believe I've given you um, remote control. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So Ryan will control the remote for the, um, I can believe we have four speakers for this project. Okay, you can go ahead and I believe Katie's gonna give an introduction, you can start. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I'm Katie Riley with Parks Capital Projects. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today. Parks is very excited to present the final plan for the Sherman Creek Community Boathouse, including park and waterfront improvements, and to continue our partnership with Roe, New York. As many will know, this area called Sherman Creek along the Harlem River in Inwood has been fully rehabilitated in recent years and reclaimed as a public amenity. This new boathouse will protect the legacy of rowing along the Harlem River and fulfill Park's commitment to providing access to the waterfront and out onto the water. Row New York has provided programming at this site for about a decade now, and this project will allow them to expand their offerings on the water while providing welcome space for education and community events in the building and in the park. I'd like to introduce Rachel Citron from Row New York as she and the design team will tell you more about the project. Thank you, Katie. I'm pleased to be here this morning. My name is Rachel Citron and I am Row New York's executive director. Row New York received preliminary approval for this project in 2019, and now we're excited to be back before PDC for final approval after years of design work in conjunction with the Parks Department and conversations and engagement with the community. Row New York uses the power of rowing to transform the lives of New Yorkers inclusive of background or ability. We make the sport of rowing, a historically elite sport, accessible. We were founded in 2002 and now serve over 2,000 people annually in Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn. This boathouse is an important project for us because it allows us to ensure continued and sustainable operations in the upper Manhattan community for years to come. This project will allow us to expand the number of youth we serve in Manhattan and provide an accessible boathouse to serve individuals with physical or cognitive disabilities. At the current time, we're only able to serve people with disabilities in Queens. The majority of the participants in our program are local community members and students of color. And with the new boathouse, we will, be, we will be able to expand free services to more community members, including, including learn to row and fitness programs, which like all of our programs do not require any previous experience or swimming ability. We see the project as a community boathouse and learning center. To that end, we will ensure that the classrooms and meeting spaces are heavily utilized by community groups for free. We have led we have had long-standing community support for this project, as noted in the letters of support from the community board, council member Adonis Rodriguez, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, and Congressman Adriano Espiat. We have also received city capital funding support for the project from council member Rodriguez, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, as well as council member Carlina Rivera, the city council women's caucus, and speaker Corey Johnson. 
I now turn it over to Stain, excuse me, to Jane Stagerberg, one of our architects, who will begin the presentation. Can we unmute Jane? Yes, Jane, you should be unmuted. Um, one second. Let me know when I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Great. Thank you so much, um, Rachel and Katie, for that introduction. I'm going to be presenting the boathouse sighting and the context for you today. Uh, the Sherman Creek Boathouse Community, Community Boathouse is proposed at the Sherman Creek site located in the Inwood neighborhood of Manhattan. The project proposal includes a boathouse, a accessible path to the water, open parkland, a landscaped waterfront peninsula, and a new rowing dock with public access. The existing conditions of the Sherman Creek site include pavement covered with gravel and mulch, existing mature trees, and a seasonal pop-up park that is maintained by the New York Restoration Project. So the following slides are going to illustrate existing conditions at the site, which include southwest views of the Sherman Creek site, views down marginal way toward the project site, and views to the Harlem River. This uh, view shows you the um, park, uh, the uh, playground of PS5, which is our neighbor to the west. This is a view showing looking toward the south along marginal way. A view toward the waterfront across that pop-up park. And views to the south with the Con Edison plant uh, and the uh, natural waterfront uh, and natural waterfront features and the glorious views across to the neighboring community. So in the landscape, uh, we worked very closely with Matthews Nielsen landscape architects. The proposed siting of the boathouse seeks to activate the waterfront and serve as a welcoming feature to Sherman Creek Park. At an urban scale, the site planning for the boathouse and surrounding park area has been carefully cited within the context of the broader circulation network within the neighborhood. Key recreation uh, connections include the Harlem River Drive waterfront, waterfront, excuse me, Esplanade, and the existing nature trail, which runs adjacent to Marginal Way from the intersection of Dykeman and 10th Avenue. Circulation preserves views of the waterfront, provides a public overlook onto the river, and serves as a welcoming feature at the entry of Sherman Creek Park. The circulation plan uh, provides pedestrian routes that offer connection to this nature trail to the 10th Avenue site, but also connections to Riley Levin's Children's Garden, which is to the southwest, and to Swindler Cove to the south. The proposed ADA path provides universal access to the Harlem River waterfront for the public, which remains a key design principle for the park and boathouse. This is from preliminary review, uh, which will be now moving to the final review site plan. The design team has carefully considered improvements upon particular details of the site plan. Uh, most notably a bike storage rack at the north of the site, an underground stormwater system, and a new ADA path at the south of the site along the pedestrian path, uh, which serves you access, public access to the waterfront. The proposed plan also offers connections to the Riley Levels Children's Guard, a Garden and to Swindler Cove with public access to the recreational area by the waterfront apron and the publicly accessible gangway. The materials for the project have been carefully selected to ensure longevity, sustainability, and resilience for the public use of the surrounding landscape. Here you see porous paving, um, all of the uh, landscape um, of the site that is hardscape will be permeable and an engineered lawn, which is uh, designed to be, um, uh, you know, stand up to the quite um, heavy boathouse use. In terms of the site section, um, the boathouse is integrated into a sloping site. Uh, and this of course is a uh, flood zone. So here you can see the north and south site sections 
which illustrate the integrated and considered approach of siting the boathouse in this unique park environment. With circulation and flood proofing, it's designed to be wet flood proofed and siting with respect to code compliance within the floodplain. The proposed fuel storage shed, an integral part of the Roe New York program, is designed in keeping with the boathouse material language and sited at the north of the site for easy access to the dock and gangway. The proposed kayak rack, which will hold a capacity of up to 12 kayaks, is a public amenity which will be available to permitted park users uh, recreational, to recreationally enjoy the waterfront. Uh, this will be um, uh, uh, accessible for um, licensed um, uh, park users so that they go through the proper training to be able to operate safely on the waterfront. Uh, key to the welcome Riverside Park are benches and landscape stone seating, which offer the public a range of areas to enjoy the spectacular views of the park and waterfront. Bike racks at the north of the site and trash receptacles throughout the park are provided as well. The, this is, um, we're going to be using standard park site lighting, which will ensure safe public access to the park, waterfront, and areas immediately surrounding the Sherman Creek Community Boathouse. In terms of the tree mitigation, the project aims to preserve as many trees as possible within the existing park. While there are few large caliper trees that we were unable to avoid removing due to the excavation for the building, the majority of the trees slated for removal are either uh, in decline or are small volunteer trees less than six inches in caliper. New tree plantings at the project boundaries will help the proposed landscape fit into the existing context. The proposed planting plan accounts for appro approximate um, appropriate selections for shoreline restoration, woodland restoration, low grasses at the north of the site, and ornamental grasses in the planter at the west side of the boathouse. And next, I'm going to turn over the description of the project boathouse design to Jim Barnes of Foster and Partners. Thanks, Jane. Um, yeah, as Jane noted, I'm Jim Barnes, a senior partner with Foster and Partners, um, and we've been working in collaboration with Jane's firm on the design and future delivery of the project. Um, firstly, thank you to PDC for letting us meet with you today. Um, and following Jane's material, I'm just going to touch on the, the sort of basic design premise for the boathouse itself, appreciating that you're um, familiar with much of the design, so I'll look to just provide a, a broad overview of the project. Um, this is the sort of main view of the project from Marginal Way, looking out east towards the water. Um, and in the next slide, we've looked to highlight just a few of the key features, um, in particular the ramp that you see, which provides universal access to both able-bodied and disabled alike, as well as the canopy uh, that provides shade to the eastern edge of Marginal Way, as well as that public access on the southern side of the build building that leads down to the park and in turn the waterfront. The next image uh, that you see is taken from the river, the river looking back towards the boathouse. Um, as Jane noted, we've looked to integrate the building into its landscape as sensitively as possible. Um, and we've used that sloping topography to try and minimize the, the uh, visual impact of the building by recessing the lower level of the boat bays into the sloping site. That use of uh, topography is also seen in this next image where on the left hand side you see the boat bays and the exterior terrace as part of the, uh, the boathouse program. While on the right-hand side of the image, you see that public access that again provides that link between marginal way and the waterfront. And this is on the northern edge of the building. This next image uh, looks at a cutaway section through the building running east-west, um, highlighting the all-important ramp on the left-hand side, which provides that universal access both down to the boat bays on the lower level and the multi-purpose room and classrooms on the upper level. Looking at the next section then, cut north-south, um, again, you see the boat bays and the program up on the upper level. You'll also note that we've created this mechanical mezzanine, uh, which elevates all of the mechanical equipment above the floodplain 
but in turn doesn't have any impact on the internal community spaces. The next two images show the key spaces um, of the multi-purpose room and the classrooms at the upper level. Um, as Rachel touched on, this is a, a community boathouse. Um, we shouldn't of course forget that all the children that use the boathouse are indeed members of the local community. Um, but these images are showing how we would lay it out for Rome, New York. But in turn, it's a flexible space that could be used for broader community groups uh, and in turn the public, whether in this large space or in the next image, you see the classrooms which can be subdivided into two smaller spaces. These next few slides just touch on the material selection for the project. The buildings comprise of a very minimal palette of appropriate materials. Um, the primary elements being the white glue lamp structure that you see uh, that, that frames both the vertical elements and that uh, shading canopy providing shade on marginal way and the public access routes between marginal way and the waterfront. Um, as well as the, the batten screen material, um, which is uh, a fiber cement board painted in a darker gray as a counterpoint to the white structure um, that floats above that building. On the western side or the southern side, you see some of the screening and indeed on the western side there, um, a more open screen which provides visual connectivity for the building entry, um, but indeed security during out of hours. We've been through um, a great many studies uh, for all aspects of the building, um, most notably the cladding, where we've looked at a range of finishes and colors, uh, be that through samples and more recently through mock-ups. Um, and that's led to the approved selection, which you see in the top left-hand corner of that right image of the lapped fiber cement board with the smooth texture and the darker gray finish. The last piece um, I'm just quickly gonna touch on is the dock design. Um, this is not just for Rowe, New York, as people have mentioned, uh, there's a community piece here, particularly the kayaking. Um, and so the, the dock will be accessible to permit holders and indeed uh, used by Rowe, New York. Um, I think important to note is the small section of uh, the dock that you see in plan, but more clearly here in this visualization, up to the gateway, which is the publicly accessible piece of the dock, allowing visitors of the park and engagement uh, out over the water uh, as part of an extension of the landscape. That's a very uh, quick and broad overview of the project. Um, hopefully that covers uh, everyone's queries in terms of the building design. And I'll hand it back over to Ryan. Okay, uh, that, that was our presentation for this morning. So I guess happy to hand back to, to PDC if there are questions. Um, Kerry, has there anyone signed up for uh, public testimony? Yes, we do. So the first person on our list is Lynn Kelly. And we will, from New York Restoration Project. Uh, go ahead, Lynn. Hi, good morning. Uh, written testimony was submitted last week to the commissioners. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. I'm the executive director at New York Restoration Project. Um, so as the licensed conservancy and the land steward for Sherman Creek Park for over 20 years, NYRP's role is to maintain, improve, and program the park. And we've worked collaboratively with the parks department and local community to turn that park from what, what, uh, what was a burnt out car and tire strewn debris lot, if you can imagine, uh, into a beautiful waterfront park. And unfortunately, it's been in a community that's faced a lot of environmental injustices over the years. The proposed boathouse is poised to be the largest in terms of rowing in the region. And we're actually looking forward to working with Row New York to successfully integrate this state-of-the-art facility into the confines and the naturalistic context of Sherman Creek Park. However, simply put, we feel that the proposed boathouse, which is a major carve out for a specialized training facility presents many design and management challenges that NYRP has voiced for many years to the parks department that are still not solved in this final PDC submission. The project, while very well intended, um, we believe will create unintentional negative impacts as currently proposed. And to mitigate these impacts, we're urging the PDC to consider several key issues. 
community uh, has enjoyed unrestricted access to the Harlem River waterfront for a variety of recreational activities, especially coming from the path along marginal way from the Dykeman houses. Unfortunately, as currently designed, access from the north will be blocked by the mass of the building and access to the south falls short. NYRP recommends the integration of accessible landscape paths to connect with the existing network in the design um, in both the lower and upper elevations. I've heard it referenced by the architect, but I actually would like to know from the commissioners if the addition of the paths both to connect to Ryle 11, as well as to the southern portion of the site are in the CD drawings that the commissioners are approving today in the final design. And is, or is it something that's being proposed by the parks department to be funded at a later date? Uh, we must ensure equitable access to an open space for all to enjoy. As currently proposed, the boathouse will permanently convert 10,000 square feet of public open space that's used as a picnic ground and flexible event space into a private concession structure. Furthermore, the construction will close another 14,000 square foot of uh, area for two years. So we're recommending that the construction area be restored to a fully functional park to mitigate the loss of open space in a community that has dealt with environmental injustice literally for decades. The entire 10 acre park is now served by one restroom, 10 acres, one restroom. And I point that out because currently the restrooms that are in this beautiful row house uh, building are not open to the public. We're recommending that designs be made to make the public uh, have access to these restrooms. Lastly, I'll just say that given our long history with the park and the surrounding community, we're concerned that these issues are not just gonna compromise the success of the boathouse, but will unintentionally alienate neighborhood, neighborhood residents that we've spent several decades trying to enjoy and have access to this park. It's not too late to make these changes and we urge a careful consideration, reconsideration of the scope of work to address the issues as submitted in the written testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. The next person on our list is Elizabeth Loris Ritter. I think I see. You have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. Uh, my name is Liz Ritter. I am the chair of Community Board 12 Manhattan's Parks and Cultural Affairs Committee. Um, I don't have to imagine what that area looked like because I was there with Bet and Billy Swindler digging that hulking car out of what is now Swindler's Cove. Um, so yes, it is a beautiful area. I would like to express on behalf of the board, our unanimous support, 39 votes in favor of Row New York's proposed boathouse project, as we stated unequivocally in our September 2019 resolution, a link to that is included in my written testimony, which I sent last week. Washington Heights and Inwood section of the Harlem River has a history of waterfront recreation that dates back centuries. The shoreline used to be dotted with row houses. Our community's desire for restoration of waterfront access is reflected in our budget priorities, statements of needs, and resolutions for the entirety of the 25 years I've been on the board. As late as the 1990s, there were three boat houses at that, at that location. They were derelict, they didn't serve the public, and they were removed and eventually replaced by the New York Restoration Project's floating Peter J. Sharp boathouse, which was heralded as a major community asset. Alas, it was not viable for prolonged use due to the inherent design flaws and its inability to float. It was never also really available for general public use as the New York Rowing Association's youth programming served elite high schools and colleges, not local children. Since Row New York began operations at Peter J. Sharp in 2012, it has worked to engage local youth. By 2018, of 111 children served, 60% were local youth, mostly from Community Board 12 itself and 22% from neighboring Harlem and Marble Hill. Even though NYRP's boathouse has become a floating albatross on our shoreline, its original intent as a restoration of public waterfront access is an important legacy upon which Row New York can build. Unlike PJS, Row New York's proposed boathouse is designed for flexibility so as to enable community use for meetings and events. The building will be fully and universally accessible and open to the community for evening and daytime rowing, and there will be public access to the dock, unlike Peter J. Sharp. 
Row New York has a long history of community engagement and the community is well represented on their steering committee. My written testimony includes a long list of meetings they've attended, minutes to which are available on our website. Um, because these drawings were an update to the proposal we had already approved two years ago, we saw no need for a second reso. While Row New York's boathouse will change the footprint of the wood chipped area behind PS5, the design and scale are totally appropriate to the site. This facility will be a destination for an underutilized public space that will provide much needed waterfront access, far greater than what New York Restoration Project's Peter J. Sharp Boathouse ever offered in satisfaction of a longstanding community priority. I reiterate the community board's support of this project, and I urge you to give it your unconditional approval. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have uh, Kiana Diaz? here if someone died uh, there okay um kiana you can go ahead hello Thank my you. name is kiana diaz good morning it's about that time um good morning everybody i'm here on behalf of council member Dennis rodriguez um the council member is proud to extend his very very strong support for Rome, New York's proposal to create a new boathouse on the Sherman Creek site um, at they seek the final approval, uh, approval from the Public Design Commission. Um, since its founding in 2002, Rome, New York has been able to deliver on its mission to use the power of rowing to transform the lives of New Yorkers, inclusive of background or ability. Um, they have been able to partner with local schools in Inwood and Washington Heights, and they have been a force of expanding equity, inclusion, and access for middle and high school students in high needs neighborhoods. Last year, over 80% of its participants were students of color and residents of Northern Manhattan and the South Bronx. Um, now more than ever, in a time of overwhelming uncertainty and challenges for many students across the city, we must invest in projects and organizations that are dedicated to supporting our youth from diverse cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds. And we have to allow them the hope to, uh, to navigate through the challenges of the pandemic and give them the tools that they need to excel. Roll New York's Bow House project demonstrates the possibility that we can achieve when we invest in our young people by not only expanding access to Roll New York's free program for even more youth in Harlem and in Northern Manhattan, but also bringing long awaited amenities such as increased community access to water, a multi purpose community space, state of the art classroom, an accessible park, and rowing docks to the larger community as we all collectively recover from the COVID 19 pandemic. The council member is a proud supporter of the Bow House and Rowan New York Youth Enrichment Program that has been supported through city council funding and has been rewarding to witness this first, their impact firsthand. With this in mind, once again, um, the council member is a very, very, very strong supporter of this application and this project. Thank you. The next person on our list is Sky, and I'm sorry, it, I don't know if it's paper or pape. It's Pate, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. thank you. Thanks for having me this Go morning. Um, I'm Sky Pape, I'm representing myself, but I'm connected with several local organizations involving our parks and natural areas up here. Um, some of my questions have been answered, but I do have, I have concerns um, regarding the environmental impact of this project. Uh, I know the, it's been mentioned that there will be new plantings, but um, being that we are right along the Atlantic Migratory Flyway, um, the proposed remo removal of uh, dozens of trees and natural habitat for birds and pollinators is, remains alarming to me. Uh, though this is really a relatively small area, this particular location uh, is a crucial stopover spot that provides providing breeding and foraging habitat for woodland warblers and shorebirds. Um, it's unclear to me whether an adequate environmental impact study has been done. And in this time when, um, when these creatures are already so adversely affected by climate change, this an optional destruction of this habitat uh, seems irresponsible. My other primary concern uh, involves the public accessibility uh, with this project handing over a significant portion of a public park to a private concession. Um, 
and Roe New York inarguably has a truly admirable mission. Um, I question how many people here will lose access to the shoreline and the surrounding natural area during and after construction, both real like temporary and permanent loss of access, but um, also perceived because it, it um, New, as a New York Restoration Project pointed out, it, uh, the building itself, the facility itself, blocks uh, sight lines of the, of the waterfront. Um, and uh, in my opinion, path closures would have a negative impact on public access to areas like Swindler Cove and those areas managed so beautifully here by New York Restoration Project, um, an organization which has contributed uh, so hugely to our community in terms of their public engagement and park stewardship. So that pretty much covers it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next person on the list is Bob Barnett. Yes. Hi there. Hi, um, I am uh, the president of Harlem River Community Rowing. So I'm speaking from the perspective of a, um, a community member of both the Inwood community, but also the rowing community. Uh, we're a, a small um, nonprofit, um, all volunteer driven. As everyone knows, and you've heard it many times, that the history of rowing in the United States starts in many ways on this river. Um, we can go through the statistics of up there, at one point there was up to 50 boathouses on the dock on, along this river or along this front, and over time they have all disappeared for one reason or another. Um, I think I want to speak directly to the benefits, not only for the community of this new boathouse and the mission of Row New York, but also to address that they are taking a, a piece of New York, of invaluable New York history and transforming and reinventing it for a contemporary community use. Um, the, the mission is unquestionably invaluable to the community. Um, the unfortunate limitations of the current boathouse have been explained and discussed ad infinitum. There's no reason going through that. But the new boathouse will not only expand the, the, their opportunity to serve the community, but enlarge upon that. And I think that is key to understanding. Uh, did I, am I still on? Anyway, um, um, and the other point I, I wanna make though is I have been, I've attended numerous community meetings that Row New York has held over the years to engage the community, to constantly get input and feedback as they have developed and refined uh, their plans. And they have been incredibly responsive to hearing all of the needs and concerns that people have had. And I'm, I'm very convinced that as they move forward, in the construction and the building of this, they will take in as many of these concerns as possible to in terms mitigate the consequences of the construction and open the doors to this boathouse in terms of how it can also serve the community in terms of providing community space. Um, and so that's why as um, why Harlem River Community Rowing wants to be, wants, is wholeheartedly in support of the new Row New York boathouse. That's all I've got to say. Thanks. And whoever's next. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that would be our last person, Phil. Um, great. Um, so um, to commissioners, are there any comments or um, thoughts on the presentation and the testimony? Hey, everyone. Um, I only had a couple things that I made notes on um, that I would like to say. Uh, First, uh, I think it's gonna be a great resource for the area. I think it'd be a great resource. But um, it seems that public restrooms is a great way to start serving a community alongside all of the other things that it offers uh, and increase in ability for people to use the site. If there's gonna be more people on the site, having more public restrooms seems like a really great addition to this. Uh, two, I wondered 
what the percentage of the windows in the public gathering space is actually open. Uh, we're gonna most likely by the time this is, uh, but um, obviously people are talking about the pandemics of the future. And I really wanna make sure that each one of the communal spaces has enough windows that actually manually open that the air doesn't have to be cleaned by an air cleaner system. Uh, so that's important. Um, and then my personal taste is that if there is a, a cement board cladding, that it not have a, a skeomorph, like a, a fake wood veneer, because it's cement board, it's not wood. And even in most wood cladding, you can't see the wood, like in pine, it, you can't see it, you paint it. So I, I, that, I just prefer that because it stays in harmony with the modern design aesthetic rather than clashing with it. And if you were gonna use a natural material, obviously it wouldn't last as long. Anyway, so, and then finally, uh, the fuel storage, if possible, if that could be moved to being electric uh, for uh, electric motors and electric vehicles so that if they're gonna be vehicles used there, the, all the like, you know, electric lawnmowers are, uh, you know, quieter, more efficient, uh, you can have charging. I mean, if it's possible at all to move from having a fossil fuel on site, I think that that'd be a great addition because then all of the attendant resources that use it are quieter and more efficient. And I think that that's pretty much um, uh, all that I have to say. But first off, yes, please, restrooms for people, please. Thank you. Hello? Yes, um, this is clearly a very, <clears throat> excuse me, admirable project and I am very impressed by uh, the long history of outreach to the community and the service uh, to the community, which is, is so important and is ongoing and I hope will continue. I just would like to ask about one or two of the points made by the restoration and I think at least one person who did offer testimony. And that is, uh, is there, what about the, um, the taking down of so many, at least as stated, trees in the immediate vicinity. And uh, what is the effect of that on not only the birds, but also in the adjacent um, land, it's not a lot, but if there are people who are entering the area and are not rowing or don't want to, are there other ways in which people can enjoy the views of the river and even maybe to picnic or not only to be involved in what is an admirable, completely admirable and very, very large uh, facility. So I just wonder if there's any way to address other uses and landscape around it and the possibility of other people being there and not necessarily rowing. Um, I also, I appreciate everyone's comments and um, also want to second um, the other commissioners concerns in terms of uh, restroom accessibility, accessibility, but also specifically um, walkways accessible while in the process of construction and afterwards, um, it should not uh, impede the continuous flow of um, people wanting to use the public space and the park. It should have a continuous connection between what is already there and what will be um, to go through the park and, and, and people should be able to enjoy and access the space um, as well as the water and there shouldn't be anything sort of blocking um, access and walk through way. Um, it's pretty much it. Any other um, commissioners comments? I can, um, can, I, I can concur on everyone's comments with regard to the access to public restrooms and also the um, construction areas do need to be restored and need to be in the drawing. Um, great, Any, anyone else? We, maybe we can hear yeah. um, Carrie Wright from the architect and the landscape yeah, designer. I think 
I, I, I do believe that the paths that Lynn mentioned are in the drawings, but maybe the Parks Department can speak to that and to the, the other questions that were brought up. Sure, thanks, Carrie. Um, we would like to reiterate that the paths to Swindler Cove and to Riley Levin will be included in Rose obligations for the project. And then that Northern Nature Trail will be completed um, in parallel with the Boathouse project by uh, Parks NRG Group. So we hope to open that simultaneously. Um, as far as the public restrooms, we, we hear that and, and we very, are very excited for this site to become more of a destination. Um, and we understand that there's been ongoing plans over the years for different new restroom projects um, and want to reiterate at this time that the restrooms will be serving all, all users of the row building and um, those that schedule events um, in the building. And so we hope that'll be serving the need at this time. Um, Just not be... No, that's not, <laughs> doesn't, yeah. Oh, what happened? So is, is, is it, not feasible for some reason to make the restrooms publicly accessible? Um, Ryan, I don't know if I'm unmuted. This is Jane Stagerberg speaking. Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. Okay. Um, I'll just say a few things, unless Ryan, would you like to take the question or should I? And then we Ryan to, uh, yes. Yeah, sure. I, I think if you want to take it from a design perspective, Jane. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, from a design perspective, as, as Katie noted, the restrooms, of course, are um, uh, accessible to the users of the community users, the boathouse users. Um, I wanted to speak and I appreciate all the, the comments by the commissioners. Um, I'm gonna just speak to the uh, public access part a little bit first, if that's all right. Um, wanted to mention a few things about the development of the Row New York site. There is a fairly contained licensed area, which shows up, that boundary shows up uh, on many of our site plans. Um, but there's a quite um, large truck turnaround that's of course required uh, for uh, the fire department access which is plaza uh, with permeable paving uh, with seating that is actually going to be in our, in the, our team's uh, uh, mind, a very beautiful overlook to the park. That overlook, um, you know, to see, to watch rowing activities on the river um, leads directly to the ADA path, which then leads to the apron um, and what we call the peninsula, just because of the shape of the waterfront which is going to be left natural with, um, with seating along the edge of that pathway and then access to that gangway. So there's actually a very, a quite wide gangway. So there's quite a bit of effort, I think, in the project to provide that waterfront access. I'd also like to mention that within the um, plan of the site plan of the boathouse itself and the paving immediately surrounding the building, there is a gently sloped um, uh, steps along both the north side and the south side of the building, which will lead the public directly to that green apron, which you can see here in the site plan. Um, in terms of loss of, 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 um, of habitat, um, we are very mindful of that. Um, we are going to be um, adding as many trees back as is deemed necessary, along with the plantings that we've um, proposed already in our site plan. So there'll be uh, more trees coming. Um, and I think it's also important to point out that the trees that are coming out, many of them are either at the end of their life or in poor shape. So I don't, um, not to say that they're not habitats, of course they are, but um, we'll be working to ensure that more habitat is added into the project. Um, with respect to the, um, to the restrooms, 
we have quite a confined site um, and the uh, boat base, the boats themselves are quite large. So we've done what we thought was the best job possible to kind of minimize the footprint of the building to the extent possible. And then we've located the mechanicals above the, um, above the floodplain. So they actually occupy one boat bay, uh, which is, um, will have lower racks in it uh, to accommodate the mechanical. Um, I think I'll, I'll leave it to both Parks and perhaps Ryan on our team to talk about the other restrooms that have been um, part of developments that I believe NYRP uh, has going on. I'll, I think somebody might be able to speak to uh, some uh, public money that has been. Uh, sure. So I can I can take that. that. Yeah. Over that to you. Part of the question, if you'd like, Jane. I think I just. You know, one of the challenges that this project has had is obviously it's a, a portion of a much larger site and there are only certain things that can be incorporated in this project. So I think we would just like to flag that the, the public restrooms have never been part of the scope agreed between Road New York and Parks um, and presented to PDC either at concept or preliminary stages of this project. Uh, we very much recognise that this building will place increased demand for restrooms, whether it's people attending community events, programming, and obviously this boathouse provides restrooms for those purposes. Uh, one of the complicating factors, this is a building that obviously has uh, children that are in it, and it's not suitable for members of the public to be coming in to use the restrooms um, in a space that has children um, also occupying the space. Uh, and then I think the final point that I'd like to add, and perhaps the park to, to department may want to expand, but our understanding is that there's previously been city funding allocated towards upgrading the comfort station on this site, and that it was always envisaged that that would be undertaken as part of a separate project from the Rowan New York Boathouse. Thanks, Ryan. I, I can reiterate that. Um, we, we don't um, anticipate impeding any plans for future expansion of comfort stations elsewhere in Sherman Creek or the use of the 10th Avenue um, NYRP facility, public restrooms, as well as this site. Um, I'd also like to go back just to the, um, the environmental reviews and then we have engaged in those and they can be shared with any members of the public that like to see them. Um, we've concluded um, through those studies that the wildlife um, will be temporarily displaced, but that um, with the restoration of, of the landscape that the wildlife should be able to return as they are today with the, the new building, of course, taking up some of that space. Just privatization. Um, I can. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm not really sure where the budget comes from or what's necessary, but it just seems to me that it is in the best interest of this project, and if you want it to be successfully moved forward, that you consider the public restrooms as part of, you know, in terms of location and accessibility. If you're going to expect more people to come to this space, then by default, you will need more restrooms. So whether it's um, uh, you or um, Parks Department, that needs to be part of the plan in terms of just access uh, where, how close to this place, um, to this new project it will be, and how many stalls, et cetera, because it just doesn't make, make sense not to have that in within the conversation. May I respond? Is, uh, I don't know, I think I'm off mute. Is Go ahead, okay? Lynn. Go ahead. So uh, thank you for the, the feedback and the dialogue. I want to um, hit on a few points that were raised by commissioners. So on the restrooms, NYRP was originally in receipt of public monies to do restrooms. This is years ago as a part of NYRP also receiving private donations to do an education pavilion in the same exact location where the Row New York Boathouse is now slated. So we unfortunately lost the private monies to do the education facility, which would have included uh, public restrooms because we know the site. There's no way we would put up a huge building and not have public restrooms. We're no longer able to do that project. So in our discussions with Park, many times, 
we brought to their attention, please, if you're gonna do this beautiful building, put public restrooms in it. Because what's gonna happen right now also in terms of accessibility, and I say this from the people that use and monitor and care for the site every day, you're gonna get access from the north side of the south, uh, north side of the site along Marginal Way, which is where a lot of people from the community access the park. They're gonna walk up, they no longer now see the water from when they come up more Marginal Way. They're gonna be greeted by a beautiful building, at, but imagine a mom with her kids, not a rower, not interested in any of the community programming, just somebody who uses the site and there's no public restroom on the days where it is busiest in the park. There's one, one that already has a line during the week because we've all seen during COVID the increase. So we have access issues, no public restrooms and on these connector pads, I know Katie said that they're in the designs, but I'm asking again, are the connector paths that connect the ADA circular path that goes around the boathouse to Marginal Way on the north, to Sherman Creek Park on the south, and to the Riley Levin Children's Garden uh, just above, are they all in the construction drawings? Who is paying for them? Will they get done? Will there actually be contiguous waterfront access in a community community that has looked for this access for years? I don't know the answer to that question. I, I think Arch, can you clarify? I'm oh, sorry, Mary. It's okay. I think they should be included if there's any drawings or site drawings about the um, through the pathway, what that looks like. So uh, parks or maybe Rebecca Macklis could confirm. I'm, I thought they were in the drawings. Um, yes, and, and maybe parks can expand on this, but in the landscape Wait. drawings, can you hear me? Um, in the landscape okay. drawings, there's a, the path is indicated um, as the Swindler Cove connector as coming as an extension from the ADA accessible path to the waterfront. So that is indicated in the drawings that we are reviewing today. Thanks, Rebecca. I can confirm that. And noting that those will be nature path connections, the ADA access will be the path shown on this diagram down to the water. Um, but the new path to Riley Levin and Swindler Cove will be a continuation of the uh, nature trail uh, connector path. Uh, and I also want to say, I think what we reviewed uh, where in originally was a boathouse uh, structure on this site and then uh, an education pavilion to to the side yes is this, there is this correct yeah correct. I, I, I mean i'm that's my memory yes sir carrie am, am i able to expand on that just sure just sure go ahead yeah, so I, I guess I'd just like to, to clarify the comments about the, the NYRP educational pavilion and also the area to the south of the boathouse. Um, I mean, this, this project has always been conceived as part of a larger plan over time for Sherman Creek Park. I think back in 2018, there was a joint submission to Public Design Commission that showed uh, the Row New York boathouse in its current location and NYRP's proposal to the south that included the educational pavilion, upgrades to that area of the park and the restrooms as well. And I think what we from Row New York's perspective would just like to clarify is that, that everything has been done in this design to allow that project to progress in the future. We're not doing anything in that area that prohibits that from happening at a later point in time. And we certainly allow the city and, and NYRP to progress that project when they choose to. I can, thanks Ryan, I can confirm. Ro was never asked to include the public restrooms um, and they can be part of another future project. Well, we're asking now. And by the way, I just have to go on the record as saying that because you have children in a building does not mean it's inappropriate to have public restrooms. At the New York Public Library, we have public restrooms with children's programming in 91 branches. So I just think that's kind of a weak link to your argument. Can we get some uh, clearer, perhaps, answer or intention on the public restrooms? And secondly, I appreciate the last comments um, from the architect about 
uh, the area uh, that now is being uh, emphasized, it was not uh, very clearly integrated into the original uh, presentation. And that, uh, I hope, is simply an omission and is not um, one that will lead to, if you like, uh, uh, reducing the importance of the area and the green area and the educational area and the pathways in the entire project. They are very important uh, and should be made important uh, in terms of the entire project. I agree, and I think if you don't, then it just looks like it's a private project that's exactly on yes. It needs to be integrated much better and much clearer for the public. Privatization of parkland. I would I would like to just ask a, a question really quickly, just to follow up that a I want a confirmation that each one of the communal spaces will have manual opening windows because I see that there are some doors, but I don't know how much of that surface area will be manual opening windows. Uh, and so I want somebody to address that really quickly, though I once again concur with all the other commissioners on the fact that we need public restrooms. And I personally will not vote to approve this. So it, it doesn't include some relationship to that happening. And then uh, lastly, uh, I am really concerned about the fuel storage on site and whether or not anyone wants to address whether that can be made into uh, some uh, some other uh, resource. So Commissioner, hey, I can Commissioner, quickly, oh, go can, ahead, Jim, to speak I was about just the gonna window. say, I can quickly respond to the, the window piece. Um, we very much are on board with your philosophy. In fact, the more that we can naturally ventilate the building rather than rely on the mechanical systems, the better. That multi-purpose room that you see has operable windows both on the east and the western side. So the idea would be that rather than use the air conditioning, we'd open the windows on both sides. Great for cross ventilation. It'll be a, a fantastic space. Classrooms on the south are the same. Washrooms obviously have uh, less visible window, but they do ventilate. So all of the spaces, all of the key spaces within there, the, the multi-purpose, the classrooms, et cetera, all have operable windows. And, and we think that's a real positive, um, only more so now with COVID, but yeah, we, we wanna use less mechanical ventilation, more natural. I can perhaps talk to the fuel storage just quickly to answer this, the second part of that question. So the fuel storage structure um, has been carefully designed in terms of code requirements and the floodplain. Um, but to, to pick up on your earlier point, um, as part of your original question and switching to electric where possible, um, that is something that Row New York is extremely supportive of and has explored and will continue to explore in the future. The reality at the moment for rowing is that this technology is extremely new and this gasoline is being used to, um, to power the boats that act as safety boats to follow the, the students when they're rowing. And at this point in time, there's not reliable enough technology that can, be, can use electricity in that scenario. It's something that we're, we're hoping over time will change and um, could be incorporated into the project in the future, say 10, 15, 20 years from now. But the reality is that there's no other rowing organization that's using this electric technology um, and it presents significant challenges at, at this point in time. Thanks, Ryan. And I'd like to just reiterate that this is a public space with community board support and park has a priority for making the public feel welcome here. Um, and in licensing this small portion of the boathouse footprint to Row New York, we believe um, this will be a successful partnership with the way Sherman Creek has been running and improving over the years under NYRP stewardship and um, with parks oversight. Um, so we have every priority of making the public feel very welcome and giving fresh opportunity to get out over the water um, and have uh, landscape and room inside the building to participate in this park. Rachel, would you like to say yes. something? Uh, uh, yes, I was trying to unmute, but I, I believe I'm un unmuted. I mean, I think in regards to, to the restrooms, we had 
numerous, as Liz alluded to, numerous commu communications and meetings with the you know, community in terms of uh, the boathouse design and the boathouse uh, early on in the project. And the, the biggest thing the community wanted from that design was was a receptionist. They wanted the, the building to be feel like it was the participants, the community members were welcome in the building and they wanted a bilingual receptionist to be part of um, the building uh, so that anyone came and coming up to the building can understand the use of the building and be welcomed. And uh, we specifically designed a space for that, that is at the bottom of the ramp, um, a specifically designed a space for, for a receptionist to welcome people into the, into the building. And really at no point did any community member, you know, as, as part of that process that was multiple meetings, um, raise the concerns of, of restrooms, nor has the Parks Department um, in all of this the design communications that we've been doing, design working, ever raised the, the, the need or the interest in restrooms inside the building. Um, and to redesign to the building to incorporate publicly accessible restrooms at this point would require a major redesign of the building, which would have significant impact to project schedule and budget. I, I do believe that we can work out with the Parks Department, um, you know, other external uses of uh, trying to find restrooms on the site, um, but I, I don't believe it would be possible to do that inside the building. Why is that the case? If you have a receptionist, someone walks in, why couldn't they use the restroom? No, I'm just saying, I'm saying, to, so the, 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 it's, they're on the second floor, so the, the public would be walking through the entire building um, to access the restrooms on the second floor. And they also Isn't that the definition of welcoming? Uh, they, they also incorporate that the bathrooms are also uh, locker rooms. So you have also have students changing in that facility as well. It's, it's, it's a combined locker room restroom as well. So I, I, I don't think it would be challenging to have members of the public walking into the, to the locker yeah. room where students are changing. Not, not our problem. Yeah, that's, that's something um, our prayer view as the commissioners are to sort of see the project overall and its connection to the entire community of New York City and the locate, lo locality and also the people that um, are part of that community. And it is imperative that they have access considering that you're going to incorporate programming and people are going to walk through the space. You would, this is a requirement that we see is necessary. I also, if I may, uh, want to ask, uh, someone mentioned that there is one public bathroom in, is it in the vicinity or what? Can I understand that? That concert station is um, adjacent directly to this site in the Riley Levin Children's Garden. Can you show that on the plan? Um, Carrie, I think you have one. I'm gonna get control back from you, Carrie. I think you. Me? Just stop my share. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. We we do need to. That's an important question to clarify where the existing restroom is. And also, if I may say, it's not desirable because I completely agree with my colleagues about uh, welcoming and the use of the bathrooms in the building. But is okay. there a way to increase the number of public bathrooms in? The, or public something uh, to fulfill that function in the adjacent area where there will, are so many people coming in and out and walking other than one? So to clarify, where is the existing restroom? Rebecca, please also jump in if you know. Um, yeah. If Parks could point out exactly, well, but I believe it's south in um, like as at the, the garden area, which is not noted on this. Sorry. Area. Yeah, it's south right. Yeah, the, it's, yeah, around. Move the cursor one inch to the left. You can see a small shed-like yes, structure. That, yeah, that, that's yeah. it. Okay. So there's a yeah. public restroom there. Public, yeah, existing is public not, restroom. Is it? Is it limited? Sorry. What is the size of the the restroom? Can somebody? 
That's a one one restroom facility oh, one stall okay. in that building. And then over on 10th Avenue on the far left of the screen would be um, the maintenance and operations building for NYRP, which I believe has public restrooms as well. Okay. Thank you. So I, I think we, we do need to move forward because we are really far behind here. Bill, do you want to? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I think we, just to summarize, I mean, I think there were a series of very important questions raised by commissioners I, based on my view. Um, most of them were answered, including the key ones about paths being um, provided in the drawings, um, windows being operable, um, electric power being something of the future, um, trees being removed um, was an attempt to be um, limited. The overriding issue, I think, for most commissioners remains the accessibility of the restrooms um, and whether and why um, access to those restrooms in this um, beautiful new building can't be provided to the public. Um, so that is a question that is um, unanswered um, uh, in uh, a positive way. Um, so um, I guess we should proceed with a vote. Um, can, I, can I just, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry to make this clarification and Katie can, can correct me if I'm wrong, but we parks um, never asked Row New York to provide public restrooms. And that was because when we started a relationship with Row New York and they started the conceptual plan, sorry, I don't know what I'm, keeps popping up. Sorry. There, there was a master plan that included facilities for the public at different locations that it was not part of Rose, um, sorry, Rose license agreement with the city. It's not Rose's responsibility to provide public restrooms. Well, well yes, we, under, we understand that, but we have a proposal from the parks department. So right. to say it's parks department's fault is fine. But that may yeah. not that may not generate a different outcome as long as you understand that, right? To I do understand that. that. I, but I also <laughs> I I mean we've been working with the commission for the last three years on this design. It's never been brought up before. The design team has addressed every comment that you guys have proposed to us, and we've gotten a great design, a great building. To put this onto row and this building right now, I think is the wrong thing to do. I think if you want to compel us to add restrooms at a different location in a different par par project later on, we could absolutely study that. We could absolutely ask for funding from, el from other sources and from, from the community, um, from, the, from the local politicians as we have to do with all of our capital projects. But I think to hold up this project because of this issue when it's not part of Rose responsibility is the wrong thing to do. I think it's part of everyone's responsibility who's part of this project. And if it's not something that you foresee, then it's problematic. I mean, we cannot, it's something that we can't uh, ignore and whether it was the parks problem or not, it's still a problem. And, it's, and we absolutely understand that and we're not ignoring it, but I think to hold up this building design is, is just not, it's not right to do. We will certainly, obviously now we know it's a major concern, but we have the community support. We've had your support in the past for the design, which has never addressed this. So I'm please asking you to-, to I, I, only, I only asked the question because I wasn't on the, the commission three years ago. I'm a commissioner now. And when I look at it, I'm gonna be signing off on giving a community a site that they can't properly use. And I don't think I feel comfortable with that. I, I can't speak to what other people did in the past and maybe they should have held to account that this should include at that moment uh, a, a guarantee that this would be done. But like right now, this needs to be done now. This, this needs to be done because when you once you hand it off, it's if, if it's two years, if, it, if it's two years after you do it, like it's gonna be two years of your construction, maybe another year of study, another two years of, I just don't see that. I don't see that that is is a is a reasonable thing to ask people to put up with, especially since they're going to see people enjoying that space, and they can't. 
So you're going to create a segregated use ability in a park. And I'm not with that. I'm just not with that. I think, yeah, if, if it takes an extra month to design a way to make this happen, it's a month. If it takes six months, it's nothing there now. There's nothing there now and people can still use the park. I, I'm not comfortable with just saying, let's wait and pass it on to someone else because there'll be another public design commissioner behind me who will not agree with what I just said. But if I agree right now that this has to include this, then we have to deal with what we have now and we can either do it or not do it. Okay. I have um, to say that I agree with um, it's like Parks just said. I don't, you know, I agree also with what the other commissioners were saying, but I think, you know, we're the last stage of this process and we've never brought this up before until now. And I understand that some commissioners were here in the previous meetings, um, but I have to say, I agree with, um, you know, Brown from Parks, you know, Brown from Parks. Um, there are a lot of other amenities also being offered too, but I think if Parks and Bro New York can take the considerations in mind, you know, I, I would support this project. Are there, there any other uh, commissioner I, comments? I, I'm just Karen? curious. Yeah, is there funding? Um, I know mm -hmm. the the person from restoration uh, said that they had received funding for a restroom and then for an education center, but they lost the funding for the education center because they it wasn't designed or they didn't have time to build it. But do they still have funding for a restroom? And would people be willing to figure out a way to expand the existing restroom that is not in the building and use the restoration monies for that expansion so that those two things could happen simultaneously. So once the building's there, there's also an expanded restroom in the children's park. So I, I do wanna say that we had confirmed with the Economic Development Corporation that there's I believe it was 1.5 million set aside for NYRP's restroom. I'm not sure if that's enough. May I respond? Yes. Okay. Uh, so when the project was originally conceived as part of the education pavilion, um, the 1.5 that's a part of the EDC was to go towards the restrooms. But as you all know, if you've done parks projects before, 1.5 is not enough, believe it or not, for a fully funded public restroom. So we would have to go back to the electeds that assigned the money in the first place, this was years ago, to see if they'd be willing to reallocate or to figure out another proposal. Um, I'd also need, frankly, board approval because the project is very different. We no longer have an education center. But I think you know, at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm, I'm actually very appreciative that the commissioners here are hearing of the importance of like, I want to make this clear, like, we're, we want to welcome Row New York on the site and be good partners. We manage all of the licensed premises that surrounds Row New York. We don't want the communities that visit this park that are not using Row New York to feel any less and not having a public bathroom and not having full contiguous waterfront access to us is less. And so however this is solved, we really appreciate if you could at least hold your vote, table this, find a new way to look at at least the restroom piece and ensure 100% that the paths are in the construction drawings and that they are paid for. I, I, can't, I can't beg you more enough Otherwise, we are turning our backs on many of the regular day-to-day -day users of that park. And that would be a sad opportunity. Very sad. Can I just ask, just say one thing? Uh, 